Spiros Vasilakis's mother Maria died of COVID-19 in the St Basil's aged care outbreak last year in Melbourne and he joins us now from Melbourne. Spiros Vasilakis, welcome. And so you had to go through the trauma last year of losing your mother and our condolences once again over that uh, terrible uh, event at St Basil's. What do you make of the fact this year that three months after the start of the vaccine rollout here in Australia, there were so many nursing homes and so many staff who hadn't yet got their first vaccines? I, I find it incredibly unbelievable. Um, and ludicrous, actually, when you consider that um, the rollout of the vaccine was first to go to the aged care homes, um, to the staff and to the residents. And we've come to a point where the federal government is telling us, look, everybody can have it now. But when we look at the aged care um, system, they haven't had it yet. They haven't, um, it, they haven't um, been fully vaccinated. Um, we've got people with only one shot of the AstraZeneca. Uh, I myself um, had my first one on April the, the, the 7th. Um, and, and waiting for the second one. But even on, on April the 7th, I recall um, my doctor telling me, it was on a Wednesday, my doctor told me that the dose that I got was the last one in his clinic. And from there on, they would have to start ringing people to tell them that they didn't have any more doses of the first, uh, um, shots of the first dose. They had to cancel people coming in. I mean, this is how bad this rollout is. I mean, it's not just people haven't got the second dose. It's hard to get the first dose. What do you make of the government's argument that it is going through this methodically and, and doing things as quickly as possible? It can't be. I mean, the, the, evidence, the evidence is there right in front of us. You know, we're, we're seeing it, um, uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis that the, the age, well, first of all, we've got aged care, um, staff um, and um, residents who are not fully vaccinated. Um, we've got um, people who are in um, are, 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 are still deliberating whether they should have the vaccine. That's the government's fault. When you look at the the way that they've rolled it out, the um, uncertainty of um, uh, what their um, you know, um, the vaccines that they're, they're giving us, um, they've done nothing um, to, to really promote it properly mm. and have people take the vaccination. Um, as far as, um, you know, the, the government can go on and keep saying that it's uh, doing, you know, a, a good job. It is not. Um, the evidence, like I said, it, it's out there. It's out there. People are seeing it. So, you know, Scott Morrison and his crew can say whatever they like. Um, we're seeing a completely different picture. And you're referring to the vaccine hesitancy among yes, among some yes, people. Yes. So do you think it's it's really important that the government steps up with some national advertising campaign? They do have ads out there at the moment uh, with one of the doctors at the front of it. But uh, how how do you assess how that's going and and what is needed to really boost the numbers? I see. Well, actually, I, I started uh, seeing the um, um, advertisements um, on TV uh, from some of the channels. Um, you know, um, they're more they're more um, productive um, than anything the government has put out there. Let me put it that way. Um, you know, again, whatever the government has put out, it's not. It should be. Um, it it should be in our faces every day. Um, you know, you look at this um, at, at the um, our care centre, um, and you've got 53 out of 76 residents. So that's what 23 residents haven't got the shot. Now, they have obviously may have opted not to have taken it, but why? And, you know, and that's a question we need to, that needs to be delved into. Why are people being hesitant? Yeah, you know, I know you've got your sceptics, you know, but the majority of Australia are not sceptics. What's happened is, I believe, that um, it's the, there's so much fear has been put into um, you know, taking the, the, the vaccination, that they're sitting there, you know, waiting. You know, I know plenty of, of relatives who are waiting for confirmation um, from somewhere that it's OK to take it. And, and I keep, I've told my, my um, uh, relatives that the best thing they can do is actually go to their own doctor. Um, and, you know, in many um, cases or in all cases with my relatives, um, they've gone to their doctor and um, their doctor has recommended they take it. 
So taking into account where we're at now and you having gone through the trauma of what you had to go through last year, do you believe Australian authorities have learned the lessons of what we went through last year? Unfortunately, no. Um, I, I said it uh, in, a, in a previous interview, um, my mother's death, uh, 45 residents uh, that died at St Basil's and everyone else um, in aged care who, or anyone else who has died from um, COVID-19 since this pandemic um, began, um, is, has virtually died in vain. If we are not learning the lessons, if we're not taking the precautions that are necessary to, to safeguard our population, um, then people have died in vain. Um, and, and really, this government needs to um, head it, um, hang its head in absolute shame. And what, what can it do to improve the situation? It needs to make the, the vaccine more um, uh, available. It, it needs to um, uh, really put a, you know, make it positive for people. You know, let them uh, reassure um, Australians that it is okay to take the vaccination. Um, that's not been. That's not, not enough of that is being done. Um, all we hear about is the, um, you know, um, the the bad results um, of of uh, blood clots and that. And the, and the government just let that one. Just let it go. Just let it go. They they don't do anything to um, to quell that fear. Um, and then you you have the the quarantine issue. You know, the the quarantine. We can't have. We should be bringing back Australians. Of course we should be, you know, but we cannot do it under the current circumstances. We cannot be doing it with hotel quarantine. It's failed in every state. And therefore, you know, the, the federal, it's the federal government's responsibility. They need to step up. They need to provide quarantine that is safe. Quarantine away from um, the rest of the public so that, you know, we can have Australians coming back to Australia, um, doing their 14 day quarantine safely and being released safely into the public. And should have they been setting up purpose-built quarantine yes. facilities a long time ago? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, you know, again, it's ludicrous. Um, we've got no leadership. We have got no leadership. What is happening in this country is we have a federal government that refuses to step up and take responsibility. And in the meantime, what it does is it sets state against state it sets Australian against Australian. It's deplorable. We do not have leadership. And Spiros, how tough has the, the last year been, um, yeah, since your mum's death and without your mum? Well, it, it's been very tough. Um, and there are moments like this latest um, uh, lockdown, um, the outbreak at the um, Arcare Age Home, um, the um, declining of the... Um, the uh, family to have more than 10 people at their child's funeral, all of that, um, it brings it back. It brings it back. I have had good news this year, I must say. You know, I'm, uh, the family is expecting, um, uh, my, my daughter and her partner are expecting uh, sometime in October. Uh, <laughs> Terrific. My niece is also expecting in August. So we've got, you know, life regenerating, if you like, um, you know, new life coming into it. But, um, you know, there are there are days where that um, that fear just sets in. Um, like I said, the lockdown. When you see uh, when I when I heard yesterday that um, we had a staff um, a, a, an aged care worker infected again in an aged care home, that just um, it just stunned me. It had me standing um, still for 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 quite a while. Like I, I couldn't believe that. We have learnt absolutely nothing. Yeah. And Spiros, I'll just let you know, we've just got some news through. Um, a second aged care home reports a worker has tested positive in Melbourne. Blue Cross Western Gardens at Sunshine Aged Care Home has confirmed that a female worker tested positive over the weekend. The home told us the female worker was tested on Friday because she'd completed a shift at Maidstone R Care. 
but her results were negative. She was tested again on Saturday as returned a positive result. Um, and so, yeah, so, uh, yeah, just uh, more news this, like, like that coming through. Okay, and, and we go back now. We go back now to July last year when, when aged care, you know, was hit with COVID-19. And this is the same sort of scenario. It was, um, and, and nothing against the aged care workers, but questions have got to be asked you know, about the, um, how much casualization of the workforce is there in aged care that um, forces people to work from one aged care center to another. And in fact, um, I know of situations where people work in aged care, but then they have to do, they work elsewhere, outside in the community, doing something else before they then go back into the aged care, you know, home to, to look after the um, residents. Yeah. So, you know, those, we, we haven't learned anything. We should have learned from 12 months ago that, you know, um, we need to, to monitor, not monitor, we need to make sure that the, the workforce um, in aged care um, has got, you know, it isn't working from one place to another. They need to have, um, they, it can't be casualised, it can't be part-time um, work. It needs to, to have, you know, um, a, a, a good... Um, permanent um, um, employment. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I'll just add security. to that. Because that employment that, security. Yeah, I'll just add to that because that, that story's only just come through. It's unclear if this is the same worker who was already confirmed positive at our care Maidstone over the weekend or if this is another aged care worker. So, we, yeah, we'll get more detail on that when that media conference happens. And, um, yeah, Spiros, uh, just uh, before we let you go, uh, what's your message then to uh, people out as someone who yeah went through the trauma last year of losing their mother and kind of you can see dangerous so signs happening again what what's your message to uh, people across Australia right now get vaccinated all right um, don't wait for a lockdown like here in Victoria to then rush and get vaccinated because you know um, the damage has already been done um, it, there's there's a good um, there's a good chance that if more of us were were vaccinated, properly vaccinated, second doses of AstraZeneca, all right, um, that you know yes we may have had some cases here in Victoria, but it may not have spread as far as as what it has. Um, please just just get vaccinated. Um, you know, we need to we need to be able to at least um, be free and move around in our own um, within our own borders, um, and and that's not going to happen uh, until you know we are. Um, I, I don't believe it's uh, it's going to happen until we're properly vaccinated um, to a percentage you know where you know where we can safely move about. Yeah. Okay, uh, Spiros, thanks so much for talking to us from Melbourne and uh, yeah, hopefully your lockdown, uh, hopefully there won't be much more spread and your lockdown can end on Friday. I hope so, hope so. Hey, uh, Spiros Vasilakis, talk to us there from Melbourne.